it's been 24 hours about since I've last coated this and I did one coating of Gion Leather Shield and we are going to put it to the test. I asked Gion if I could do some of this test and they're a little nervous, but they said you should totally do it. So we're super excited and hopefully I don't damage my vegan leather white seats. But if I do, at least it's in the back and I'm just praying that it's not gonna be damaged. So what we're gonna be doing, right? Just for those of you who haven't watched it, you can watch it, we're gonna put the link below on what we did and how we coated it. But remember, we created a barrier between the vegan leather and we put that coating on top of that. So when you do put other things, it should wipe a lot easier. And this is good for 12 months. So the first thing we're gonna be doing is we're gonna tape it uh, and we're gonna be testing five different things. You know what, let me just take this glove out until I get to the testing part. But I'm gonna go ahead and put some tape from here. So what's really interesting about this process right now is check this out. It's not even sticking right now. <laughs> this is like masking tape. It's not it's frog tape and it's not even sticking. So what I'm gonna try to do is try to create at least a line with the tape. But you got one, you got two area right here. So that's a good test. So does tape work on Gion? No, it does not stick once you coat it. So now that we have all tape or sort of tape, uh, the first thing that we're gonna be testing is just water. And the reason why are we doing water, right? Water should have no impact, whether I have it coated or not, but I do want to show you some of that hydrophobic properties, okay? So I'm gonna just put water right here in this one. So here we go, just a little bit of water. It's not gonna hurt the seat. So here we go. So one thing to note is check this out has massive hydrophobic properties. So if you put water like this, it's gonna beat up and just kind of sit in the top of that surface. And to wipe it down, you can just wipe it down. And honestly, significantly from yesterday when I was cleaning these seats before I coated it, it felt a lot rough. Right now, it is so smooth. It almost just glides through with this microfiber. So water, again, it's not really putting this at all to the test, but you can see immediately that it is definitely hydrophobic and it is beating, right? So the next thing um, I'm gonna be testing is mustard. And the reason why we chose mustard over ketchup is mustard's actually, um, it has a dye, a yellow dye that has it. And it stains a lot more than you think. And I'm gonna put it here since I just put water. And I'm just gonna put a long line of just mustard. Oh, this, this hurts me so bad. Ugh. Look at that. And what we're gonna do in this case is we are gonna leave it for a little bit uh, and then we're gonna see if it stains. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and do the next round, right? So uh, the next thing is gonna be coffee. We're just gonna put in this lid right here and I'm just gonna put some coffee down. Look at that though. Okay, it's going down to the bottom, but let's just go ahead and put coffee, just like that. Uh, the next thing is gonna be some dirt, okay? so. I got some Tennessee dirt over here in Chattanooga dirt. Uh, and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put it and just smear it. I wanna see if I can get some like wet dirt. This dirty, this dirty. This, uh, this pains me a lot more than you guys watching this because this ain't your car, this is actually my car. So I got dirt right there and then lastly, uh, this is what makes me the most nervous in this testing, but we have a Sharpie. I guess I'm trying to replicate like a gene transfer because the gene transfer does have that blue dye um, and it can kind of stay there for long periods. So this, I'm pretty sure this would be much, much stronger than the gene dye. So we got the Sharpie. Man, I really smell this mustard. Hopefully it comes off. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put um, one small line, right? I'm not gonna put a giant line and just go ahead and go whoop. And we're gonna go ahead and start cleaning it up. I'm gonna go ahead and take this out. And what we're gonna do to clean it is, first of all, we're just gonna wipe it down with a microfiber, okay? And we're also gonna be using a little bit of our interior cleaner. So go ahead and spray a couple. And let's go get the mustard first. Oh yeah. Mmm, yum. Interesting. So one thing about the mustard already, there is a little bit of a transfer, okay? So there's a little bit of yellow that runs across here. The coffee, 
Very, very small. There's a little bit of transfer. You could see a little bit darker hue across here. I'm not even like rubbing or scrubbing or anything like that, just so you guys know, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and get the, the liquid though down there. And then, okay, I'm gonna grab a brand new microfiber because I don't wanna be putting all of these things onto the seat itself. I'm gonna go ahead and get the, the dirt. There you go. So it did, for the most part, the dirt, uh, no stains at all. But again, there's some mustard, there's a little bit of coffee, and now the ultimate test right here, guys. We're gonna see if we can get that permanent marker off. And this is not a fail yet, right? So we're gonna do the second round where I'm actually gonna put some elbow grease First to the mustard, I'm gonna go ahead. You know, I really shouldn't have put this much mustard. Cool. So you can already see that just one round of little bit of a stronger scrub. Um, the mustard is a lot less visible. I'm gonna go ahead and move on now to the coffee. Put some oomph to this. Okay, so the coffee is pretty much gone. There's no stains uh, whatsoever. But right now we're gonna move on to what I think is the most difficult one, which is going to be uh, the permanent marker. So let's go ahead and scrub. So far, it's definitely a lot lighter, but it's still there, just a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and do my third round now. So, I've been trying to get this off with our interior cleaner, but unfortunately, the permanent marker or Sharpie is a little bit too strong. So, now, I'm gonna still try to get it off. Well, this is 70%. Uh, rubbing alcohol, uh, iso alcohol. I'm just gonna go ahead and try to rub that and see if I make any progress here. We'll go ahead and try to spread that a little bit. Okay, I feel like I'm making a little bit of progress there, so I'm gonna try to keep going at it. All right, so again, I've been doing this now for a few more runs, and look at this. This is significantly better. I feel confident with a little bit more elbow grease, I am going to get this off. Okay, so I wanna go ahead and do one more round. Hopefully it'll be off by then. And now this has been sitting for a good bit too. So the main thing about stains like this, you do wanna to get to it qu pretty quickly. The longer you let it sit, the harder it'll be for you, okay? Wow, that's nearly off. I used some 7% alcohol and I used some elbow grease and I was able to, able to get it up probably around 95%. I mean, it's barely there. If you really look at it closely, you'll see it, but still very much impressed. I'm curious now, if I didn't actually coat this with the leather, leather shield, would it be almost impossible to remove this? Because this was a challenge to remove. Hopefully this helped you guys kind of understand what Gion leather, leather Shield does. If you have any questions, let us know in the comments below. We're gonna try to come up with a lot more content, hopefully not damaging my Tesla, but please click on that subscribe button and follow us. And we'll see you next time.